Live from San Francisco, celebrating 10 years of high-tech coverage, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2019. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. And welcome back here on theCUBE. We're at the Moscone Center here, downtown San Francisco. Gorgeous day outside, by the way. Picture perfect day. Chamber of Commerce weather, but a lot of, a lot of big news happening inside here for VMworld 2019, along with John Troyer. I'm John Walls. We're joined by Pierre Luca Ciadelli, who's the Vice President of Product Management at Dell EMC. And Pierre Luca, good to see you, sir. Thank you, it's and, awesome uh, to be here. Great, thanks for being here. And Manib uh, Manhazadeen, uh, who's a VP of Solutions Product Marketing at VMware. And Manib, I know you're right, just hot off the uh, presentation <laughs> stage. Yes, I Catch am. Catch your breath, it's all going to be fine. How was, how was your audience? I'm sure standing room only. Yeah, it was 1,300 plus. Excellent, yeah. yeah. Been a big week of already it has, yeah. uh, for you and, and your team. So first off, let me just, let's step back, talk about the vibe of the show, the theme of the show. We saw Pat on the stage Perfect. about an hour and a half this morning. Just your thoughts about day one and, and uh, the big announcements that, uh, that VMware's been making. It's been a great uh, week, and it's actually been a great uh, approaching week. As you know, on Thursday we announced intent to you know, acquire both Pivotal and Carbon right. Black right. Uh, for close to about $5 billion. So that's kind of a big announcement by itself. And then how do you kind of bring in and you know, keep day one where you're not too di you know, focused on those two, but get the narrative of VMworld across. Right. And really, you know, where we have, you know, Cube has been with us on this journey for a long time. Right. We've seen that data center shift into kind of two tangents. One is you know, workloads in the data center break out into public clouds. Second, rewritten into cloud native applications. Mm -hmm. And if you've seen our strategy evolve, and that was kind of the key messages, hey, we're embracing both the modern app development, the focus on Kubernetes and Tanzu announcement was all about to say, we and where platforms ready for the breakout of both tangents. First, cloud native, we've got Kubernetes, we're bringing it right into vSphere so that everybody in the audience can support it. Second, the breadth of our cloud everywhere, right? So we've gone from Amazon to IBM to Google to Azure, so it'll give you the infrastructure for your workloads to be your choice. Right. Modernize or migrate. <laughs> um, that was a key message for us to kind of land today. For a lot of our audience, we're kind of stuck in that same piece of, what am I doing with my workloads? What is that platform I got to build on? And you know, the key foundational platform being VMware Cloud Foundation, right. right? That was our strategy. And I think uh, last year we called out VMware Cloud Foundation in Pat's keynote because I, I wrote it 44 times. <laughs> <laughs> we, we didn't do it that many times this right. time. We right. only said, that's the platform that lands in Amazon, GCP, Azure, IBM, and 4,200 you know, cloud provider partners. Right. Uh, that gives you really that public cloud extension. The second part being modern apps. Kubernetes is a new kind of modern app development platform. vSphere is embedded into that project specific and the whole Tanzu announcement, right? right. So, so really um, a powerful message. Uh, what do you think? Was that successfully landed? I think so. Well, John, <laughs> you feel good about what you heard yeah, today? Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think uh, VCF is super interesting. Uh, I'm also kind of, so there was an announcement today also about uh, the Dell Technologies Cloud validated designs yep. for Absolutely. using VCF. So VCF, the layer, which is kind of uh, the, the, the VMware stack with some extra magic in it that, that can, that can be in, make a private hybrid cloud you know, everywhere. Yep. So talk to us a little bit about yep. uh, DTC, Dell, Dell Technologies Cloud, as I call it DTC. Yeah. The, uh, it's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff in that as well. So, but we have two very complicated solution stacks that are, we're talking about now. So can you talk a little bit about the validated yeah. design and what came out of that Absolutely, today? so before we go into the validated design, I think it's very important, as Manip said, uh, when we think about the Dell, uh, uh, Dell Technology Cloud, really it's a, um, a component of best of breed technology from our storage, networking, and also compute, but with the VMware VCS on top. So we work very closely with VMware, and today we are announcing today the cloud validated design. As we announced at the, um, at the Dell Technology World uh, in May, we said Dell Technology Cloud is this. Now, we want to tell to the people how you can easily deploy this. What is me make this tangible? So what we're doing today is rapid time to value with the design and pre-tested configuration that we put in the Dell Technology Cloud Validated Design, as we said. The other important things, as Manip said, right, it's uh, 
the, and I, I heard this also from the Cube. Uh, uh, there was a debate with Stu and, and other people about what, what is the cloud, how I deploy the cloud. When we think about Dell technology, we speak with different peoples and two set of peoples. One is the app, right, the cloud app. All the app people that they want to build, have all the automation, DevOps, operation, and all these things. But behind that, those people, there's still an infrastructure. So we are speaking on both things. So it's very important this paradigm is there where you can have people that they can consume the technology and understand how to build the infrastructure to be automated and build that automation for the cloud. So that's what is the Dell technology validation design, right? So um, one of the biggest things here that we announce is not only the cloud validation design, it's the first one, but also the ability to have compute storage and network together, and also use a primary storage as a primary citizen of the VCF. So we, we should talk about that later, but that's Absolutely, the and I think uh, to, you know, to catch on to that, um, you know, talking about the applications, et cetera, you know, again, in the evolution of cloud, and we've been on this journey for 10 years, is we've had, um, the first few years of the cloud journey was felt like a one-way street which was kind of meant where people were shutting down data centers and going to all these public cloud providers. It was always a one-way street. Now, VMware, and you followed us closely, we had a service called VMware, you know, <laughs> VC, VCHS, which is VMware Hybrid Cloud Service, before the vCloud era, and then we came out with this solution, right? The idea was we thought there's going to be movement back and forth, but it wasn't the case. People were seriously shutting down and going one way. As we made all these partnerships of you know, Amazon, IBM, um, we started seeing, you know, heard stories of IHS, to Freddie Mac on stage, where you know, they take six weeks to move 100 applications one way into the cloud. Um, customers started asking us the question to say, if it's so easy to go that way, is it also that easy to bring it back? Come back. Right? right. right. Yeah. And that kind of led to the whole kind of Dell partnership, Dell announcement with you know, Dell Cloud Foundation, um, you know, uh, VMware Cloud Foundation, Dell Technology Cloud Platform, to say that, hey, it's actually, there is a notion of not going from hardware specific, you know, just high tuned for workloads to commodity hardware in the public cloud. There is now a need for having common hardware platform on both on-prem, off-prem because there is a need for customers to take EC2 workloads or you know, Azure workloads and bring it on-prem again. That was just the notion of how fast it is. Yep. I, I, I add that point because it's so critical to know that your hardware is performing and tuned to perform for high business critical applications. People forgot about them the first few phases of going to the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, and now as they think about a hybrid, true hybrid cloud nature, they want optimal performance in the software layer, in the hardware layer, you know, hence our announcement of Dell Technology Cloud, Cloud Foundation, validated design, is really supporting that customer notion. So it's like this, this optimal uh, or, or maximized uh, flexibility is yes. what you're trying to give people. I mean, is that... With the cloud simplicity, well, that's yeah, really the but key. But what drives that? I, mean, I know that you have, you've, you know, you, so whether you're on-prem or you're off-prem, you're going to decide what workload's going to go and what space, so on and so forth, but is, is some of that kind of hedging bets for future workloads because you can't predict where they're going to be done or where you want them done, or is it just providing flexibility today? and let's not worry about tomorrow. I, I, you know, it just seems like there's, there's a lot of there is a run, a runway here, if you will. Yeah, and I think um, there's no right or wrong answer, right? Okay. One of the big workshops I do with our customers is really kind of say, have you figured out what's your three to five year you know, application strategy? Because again, yep. in that first phase of that fast migration to the public cloud, People who are just like CIOs I know, it's like, I have a cloud first strategy, what does that mean? I'm shutting down all data centers, I'm going to the cloud. Uh, right or wrong, that's my cloud first strategy. Now what they've come to realize is not all workloads work effectively in the cloud, mm -hmm. right? So they kind of like, hey, put an application strategy to say, what are the most optimal applications that'll get the benefit of cloud? These are like e-commerce, retail, like they have to have, you know, Black Friday, expanding elasticity. Yeah. If you got, you no know, slow mundane, you know, back-end processes, doing batch processes of massive storage of in you know, a bank ledger in the back end, eh, 
they're not going to get that elasticity. I know what it is. I know how many you know, batch process I got to run. So people are getting smarter about which ones get the benefit of you know, modern app development or cloud elasticity, which ones don't really need to have that. Mm -hmm. So we've seen best practice customers actually have a very good app strategy through to five years and then decide how much of my app strategy is gone to the right you know, or gone to the left, right? It's pretty much to say, I don't have to change. 60, 70% of my Eastern European customer, their banking ledger is still on mainframes. They're not in a hurry to go to the cloud. Whereas, you know, FinTech on the East Coast is going, I'm going to the, I'm going to the cloud, right? So it's really that strategy that they should take the app strategy and decide what the infrastructure strategy is on the top of it. I, I think from the storage business, uh, we see that uh, really clear, right? The app is definitely what is uh, moving the things, right? It's not, uh, people, they're not thinking anymore because the transformation is in the way that you consume the infrastructure. They're not thinking anymore about what I put there, but is about what app I need to run, how I build my app. So it's the environment. And I, I don't think, uh, personally, I meet a lot of customers, there is not one right way or wrong way, yeah. it's an end, right? Mm -hmm. as, as you can see also in VCF, we have vSAN, vxtrail, and primary storage. Mm -hmm. If you look at two years ago, we will be sitting here and say, you know, it's only this, not the other things. When we, I've been in Gardner conference, three years ago was like, it's all cloud. It's reality is the, the, the world, the, the, the information technology world is always the same, where it's an heterogeneous thing. Because people, they need to have the trust, right? You cannot run your entire things on something that you don't know or you didn't prove it. So what we give here today with our technology is the flexibility. Mm -hmm. You can have a cloud approach, but use the trusted PowerMax, for example, in conjunction with vSAN, yep. in conjunction with the Unity. So not only is a, is a proof that you can preserve your investment, but is a proof that you can start to build those up. And if you've seen what Pat say today, then those up can live everywhere, mm -hmm. so you can go you can move, it's much easier to move and you can just yeah. trust what you're doing. And, and, and uh, you, say you, caught, you hit a important point on the move part, right? And people are so easy, like, hey, I moved a thousand applications yeah. in six weeks uh, to VMC and AWS. You know, the fundamental notion where that was not possible before mm -hmm. was compute network storage. Like, we've been doing vSphere for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know that. And it wasn't that easy because what used to happen is people thought, hey, a virtualized compute, I can move it. But what did not happen as you moved that was your databases, your, right. you know, your storage rules didn't follow you into the cloud, right. your networking QoS and you know, policies and you know, priorities didn't follow you in the cloud. So that was kind of like a, you know, a, you know, I'm an Australian, so it was a half-assed <laughs> solution, right? So, <laughs> so bear with my language, but it was a yeah, half-assed yeah. solution, <laughs> but really what needs to happen is your compute, your network, yes. your storage has to all work together, right. and that's where Cloud Foundation was powerful. It's and what awesome. we're lining with this validated design is also that capability that your compute network storage is one unit mm -hmm. from an app. Once you package it, and make it available in all the platforms, then that migration becomes six weeks, two weeks to move that. Because once you break it apart, it's a nightmare. There's right. not a lot of folks yeah. who have survived database yeah. migrations. Right. I mean, maybe, maybe Pierre, Luca, you can yeah. kind of sum us up here. This, this conversation has been a lot around evolution, right? And there's also been an evolution of, of data center design and, yes. and what to expect with that. And, you know, just buying things off the shelf and getting a VAR and then we, you know, the VMAX and we've been through this whole and, and now we've talked about VxRail which can be part of this solution. But can you talk just to maybe, maybe take, us in, take us out with a, or into the future with a, uh, Dell Technologies Cloud as the idea of the validated design, the idea yeah. of this stack from Dell Technologies in storage, et cetera. Like what can we expect in the near future and, and I, how, is, how much guidance will folks yeah, get? Yeah, absolutely. So without breaking any MDA things, but <laughs> Uh, this is only the first step. So the cloud uh, uh, validated design is just the first step where we said, okay, we are testing this, we're putting this together. We are working very closely to also solve the entire um, things that VCF allow you to do first day deployment, allow you to expand the infrastructure, and allow you also to do life cycle management. For example, with the VxRail, we, we already have the life cycle management part. We are working in, in way to do that also for our storage and other things. So if you think about that, then it becomes, as you said, 
all the policy that we, we put, like with Vivol, will be strategically uh, is, is in that sense, the policies can be carried over. So then you can go to VMC, you can go to another place where the, the software and infrastructure can move back. So because people, they can do this on-prem and replicate exactly, but not only replicate the application, but replicate the SLA, what are you doing, the, the QoS, all these key things that makes people run in enterprise applications. Right, so that's I think it's a it's a very exciting moment. I think it's it's just the starting of this thing. Absolutely, right. gentlemen. Thanks uh, for the time. Thank and, you. And you're all you paint a pretty exciting future, don't you? Yeah. So I, I, I can't so. wait to look forward to even to, to VM World 2020. Wait and, till and Barcelona. See, come on. Yeah. All right. right. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm not making that road trip though. So unfortunately, <laughs> we're going to have more Barcelona's there, gonna be so. good. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm, I'm a domestic guy. So <laughs> all right, good. Hey, gentlemen, thank you for the time. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it very much. Great thank discussion. you very much. Thanks thank for having you. us. Back with more from San Francisco right after this.